Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Starting the season one, that was a big deal. Um, I'm proud of those guys. It's a great team win. That was a good team. They were really good in the elements that we were playing in. So I'm super proud of our guys to just go out there and compete at a high level. How, how impressive was the offensive line? You know, zero sacks, and it seemed like you had a good amount of time out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't even, like, give those guys as much as they really deserve. Those guys are how our offense runs. They run, like, their work that they put in is uh, unheard of in ways. Those guys get after it continuously each and every day. Um, Coach, Dean, Coach Keen does an awesome job with those guys. I mean, he gets those guys dialed. But those guys take it into their own hands, and it really comes down to them making the plays. And their execution was awesome, and it showed. I mean, they had a really good day to get together. A lot was made out of the number of targets you had. You know, you found eight guys on Saturday. Five of them made their first career catches at Broncos. Just how nice was it to have just so many people to throw to? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it all the time. Those guys are – there's so many play, playmakers in the offense – and I think it's a props to them for working hard each and every day. And uh, like we talked about, the football gods find those guys that work hard. With, with that said, Coach Cutter said yesterday, hey, there's only one ball and a lot of guys that you know, need to get fed, I think was what he said. I mean, Prince didn't even have a target. Like, I know it's going to be game to game, but how do you try to keep everybody happy with, and disperse the ball evenly? Yeah, I mean, that's tough because you don't have a guy that's playing football just to run around, right? Everyone wants the ball in their own situation. But I think going at it every day with like the effort and attitude that you're going to get the ball is a like really important thing. I think those guys are showing it. And so for those guys, I mean, like you said, it's tough. Everyone wants the ball, but I think those guys are doing an awesome job of just going after every day and attacking it. What do you look for on your read, you know, when you decide, you know, who to dish the ball off to? Yeah, I mean, we never really have a set play of where the ball is going, right? A lot of it comes down to progressions and stuff. So that's really the big thing. I, I couldn't give you a really good answer of how I look at it, but it's more so progression-wise, and guys are in the right spot at the right time. I don't, think, confi I don't think confidence is an issue for you, but you, you started the game, you completed a game, you won a game, and considering the last time you played a game, you left with an injury, checking all those boxes, how does that do for your mental psyche, just knowing that you can do all of the above? Yeah, I mean, I think you just mentioned the, men the mental side of the game is by far the biggest, and especially the position that... I mean, I feel like I have to take pride in the mental side of it. But like you said, it's a big confidence builder. I mean, going out there and the last time I played, I was ended with a season-ending season ending injury. So that was unfortunate. But it was awesome to be out there with the guys and have fun again. I mean, there's so much joy in this game. And it was, it was awesome to experience that. And I think it's a lot of confidence going into the next couple and of how weeks. Did, how did you mentally process that in the 10 minutes after the game? Did you give a big whoa? Or, I mean, how did you – what was your feeling? I mean, not exactly – it was, it was good. That's, that's the best way to put it. It was a really good feeling just knowing like we were able to accomplish what we were there for with the guys, and so that, that was a good feeling. Look, Joel Capos, he was one of your top targets this last weekend, and he's coming off a torn Achilles and such. Just what can you say about him? Yeah, I mean, we talk about Luttrell all the time. His name's mentioned in so many good ways. There's not a bad thing to say about him. I mean, he goes about it. like a, He's one of those guys that shows the prime example of like going about everything um, like he's going to get the ball, and he's, he's one of those guys in the run game. That's a big component. I mean, you saw Ashton's run where he took down like five guys of their defense. I mean, he even took down Chris Marshall. So, I mean, Latrell's a stud, and he goes about everything the right way, and he handles business correctly. So to have that pick and then to come back on the next drive, you're back up at your 10-yard line after the penalty, and to have the, the throw to Cam, then to Latrell back-to-back plays, just how... I guess how eager were you to, to have that opportunity when you got the play call, I guess, right after that pick to, to, to let it fly? Yeah, I mean... After the pick, it was like, it's one of those things where you can't sit there and, like, frown upon an interception and let that affect your next couple of drives. So I, on my side, I was glad that Coach Cutter actually put the trust in my hands to where it's like, we're still going to throw the ball this game and it's not going to be forbidden. So that was good, and I think it was a big confidence builder coming after that to just be able to go down and just th throw the ball in general. So, From your point of view, what was the Ashton Chips performance like? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can't even describe it. It's the best way to put it in the simplest way is record-breaking. And I think that goes to props with all, like, 11 of the guys on the field. I mean, you saw critical blocks and critical moments. And then you even put in Sire Gaines that, as a freshman, comes in and does that. I mean, we ran the ball awesome, and it's going to help us down the run. Like, if we can run the ball like that every game, it's gonna be, we're going to be set up awesome. Is it a big deal to you and the rest of the guys that he's a legit, you know, two, three, four Heisman candidate shot to go New York and all that that comes with having a legit Heisman candidate to your program, all the national stuff. Like, is it a big deal for you guys to help him get this thing? Yeah, I mean, that's every kid's dream, right, is to go and win a Heisman. And when you're – I don't think people realize, like, you're in contention. Like, you want to help a guy get there. And I think everyone understands that everyone – like, that's a motivation for some, but also, like, 
everyone wants to win games, you know. So I think it goes hand in hand of like if we're winning games, Ashton's gonna play good. He's gonna get the touches he needs to and go for the yards that he needs to. Like if it's not the right person, they could get under a team's skin. But it seems like that's just not that's not the case with Ashton. What what has he done to from you know, his teammates' perspective to to earn that, I guess, where it's just not a big deal to you guys that he's getting so much attention. Yeah, I mean the main thing with Ash is he's earned everyone's respect by not only the work that he puts in on the field, but off the field. I mean, you talk about a guy that's humble as they come. I mean if you saw Ashton Genty outside the facility, you wouldn't even know what he's doing, right? Like, he's not going to go and talk about himself and, like, prop himself up in so many ways. Like, Ashton's just Ashton where he's going to go handle business. And I think that's what everyone sees is nobody's going to be like, oh, this guy's a jerk. Like, Ashton's Ashton. He, he loves each and every player on this team, and he's earned so much respect by everybody in this building. The, uh, the crowd noise today at practice, that's not an every away game thing, right? That's, that's special occasions like going to Austin Stadium. Uh, we do it most away games, yeah. Is I mean, you guys pretty fired up, though? Yeah, I mean, crowd noise is something that comes with the game, so it's, it's, it, is, it is a fun feeling, for sure. I saw a couple times with the, it'd be under 15 seconds, and you're still kind of look at listening. I don't know, how, like, is that just some first game? Like, what was, how's, how'd that kind of work with the helmet communication stuff? Yeah, that's a learning curve, for sure. I mean, there was times I got to be better where I, like, m miss half the play call, and I start freaking out, like, oh, my goodness, what did he just say? But... <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going to get it figured out. And like you said, it's a learning curve. I mean, it's the first time for myself. I know Coach Cutter's done it because of the league. But, like, it's the first time for myself. So I know I was talking to Tubner about it, too. And it was, like, really, like, weird for some times. But it's, it's, it's good. It helps us in so many ways. And we're learning through it for sure. Are you more of a, a less information or more information <clears throat> guy when it comes to that communication? I mean, there's certain things where I like more. But I always say less is more to where, like, I feel like if I go into the game, I should have done my own preparation to where it's like I don't need these big tips and reminders. So we saw, I mean, they were still doing some signaling. So is, are you getting it from Dirk and then the rest of the team's getting it from the signals, or, or how does that kind of work? Yeah, I, I get it from uh, Coach Cutter, and then guys have their eyes to the sideline. And then he was saying maybe the volume could have been, are they working on trying to make it louder for you or something? Was mm -hmm. it kind of tough to hear at times? Yeah, I think that's something they're going to put focus on. And uh, I don't know much about it. I know we've talked about it, just trying to get it louder because – in this case, especially this next week, louder is better. You know, the, this program are you, is 3-0 and against Oregon, and that's a big deal around here. This is why you probably came to Boise State to get to play in these games. This program, you guys riding high, obviously where Oregon is just, now that all of a sudden we're here, five days away, like how excited are you and the team for this opportunity to really kind of own the college football world if you get a win this week? Yeah, I mean, I think the main focus right now is us. We're not, and I mean, you mentioned the past, and the past is the past, and so our focus right now is us. Like, how can we go about um, getting better from week one to week two? Because at the end of the day, when we have 12 opportunities that are, like, promised to us, how can we gain more? And this is a big step into it. So trusting ourselves and going out about this week in, like, a very serious manner to where it's seriously about us. Like, if we go play our best ball, I mean, if we're, like, if we go play our best ball, I think there's a lot of confidence to be built going into the next few weeks, especially going into conference. What are you expecting from the atmosphere in Austin? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the crazier places to play. Uh, it's loud. Their fans love Oregon football. And they're, they're a good team. So from expectation-wise, I think uh, we know it's going to be loud. And we just got to handle our operation at a high level, communicate almost overly to where there's no mishaps like that stuff. And I think momentum comes from being at home, but also you can very like you can shut that down in ways. And that place is going to be bumping. It's gonna, it's going to be fun. I'm excited to go play there, and I think everyone in here is excited to go play there. It's obviously early in the week, but just what have you seen from the Oregon defense and kind of what you're expecting? Yeah, I mean, they're the best way to put it is I don't think everyone realizes they're a very solid defense. I mean, it's a great team, and they're really good at what they do. They're super sound. And they've got a lot of playmakers on their defense. And so going about this week, I know a big deal is like getting our scouts to give us the best look that they possibly can because it's a big week for the whole team. And so I think Oregon-wise, they're super solid. They play fast. they got playmakers, and they're big. So well, um, we just got to go approach ourselves in a high manner and um, trust each other that we're going to go into this week with a good feeling. And then just Dylan Gabriel as a fellow quarterback, you know, he's a hell of a college career. Just what can you say about him? Yeah, I mean, that guy's played a lot of college football games, and he's proven to be uh, one of the better ones. And so he's a, he's a guy that's named up, up for the Heisman. Like, 
he's a stud, and he, he does, he controls the game really well. I mean, you watch that last Idaho game. He, he had an awesome day. I, they didn't score as many points as I'm sure they'd like, but he's, he's a stud, and he, he, he handles that offense really well. It's, it's cool to, like, watch those guys because he really is a stud, and he's fun to watch. When you watch game film, do you watch, I mean, obviously you watch the defense. Do you watch the quarterback, too? No, I don't, I mean, I don't really watch the offensive side of the ball as much as I, I don't know if I really should, but I think, like, you watch Oregon football and you see those guys, so. What do you think of Cam Camper's debut? I mean, he's a stud. Cam's... Cam and I have gotten close over the last little bit. He won't tell you this, but I do pick him up every morning. And so uh, it's funny. He's a stud. And it was awesome to see him like, come back from an injury. We all knew he was going to be a big playmaker. And so seeing him come out and make plays was awesome. He, he seems kind of just have his business like, approach out there. I mean, he might be, maybe he's more jovial in the locker room or whatever, but he just seems very businesslike out there. Yeah, I mean, I think how you see him is how most people see him. He, he does handle his business in the correct way. And he's a grown adult, so. Has any other receivers asked you to pick them up in the morning too? <laughs> no, nah, nobody's asked that, but Latrell comes with us too, so. Sweet.